Hello and welcome to K-Times 2 Reborn Nursery. I am KJ and I have Kensington here today and we are going to get her changed in some PJs. This is a posh peanut um, PJ that I got last year. This was around um, holiday time last year that I purchased this one and um, I think this is the first time I'm actually using it because I don't really dress them in PJs too often um, but I'm doing it today. So as you see by the title, um, let's try this again. I think in my last video where I was talking about the joys of reborn motherhood, I did not, I felt that I did not fully go into all of the joys. I think I was, I was very, very vague. Um, and for someone who does not collect, I didn't really give them very much information um, aside from just like the fact that I just like dolls. So I decided to dig a little deeper and go a little further into the topic um still on the joys of motherhood but i just wanted to kind of go more in detail of what i mean so let me just say that um let me do a disclaimer in the beginning um by no means am i com comparing or saying that actual motherhood is equivalent to reborn motherhood dolly motherhood because one um dolls are not real um <laughs> And two, you don't go through uh, nearly what you go through in childbirth um, to get a doll. But there are some parallels. Um, and I would like to bring them up in this conversation. So we all know that um, with the beginning of childbirth, it's, well, I don't want to go <laughs> to the actual start of it, but let's say um, conception is where it's where I would like to begin to put it that way <laughs> uh, so conception for a reborn mom begins when she um, is actually dolly shopping so I don't even want to call it conception but the reborn the dolly equivalent would be dolly shopping so you can do that various ways you can do it through attending a doll show you can do it through um, seeing someone um, post a doll and there it's for sale you can see that on social media you can see it um reborns.com um and that's not to be confused with like those china companies reborns.com actually are collectors who are selling babies or they even have um artists who post their babies there so i do want to make sure i mention that that is separate from like um i know reborns um there was a reborn something that was similar to it, but it, it linked you to those fake dolls. I'm not talking about that one. Um, Reborns.com actually is a selling site for uh, for reborn dolls. All right, so whether you go there to look for your baby or whether you see a kit that's coming out with some of the kit dealers such as McPherson's Arts and Crafts, um, Irresistibles, um, and there are some more, but those are like your two. Oh, and Bountiful Babies. Those are like your three main ones that like really, especially here in the United States, that actually um, sell the kits. So whether you look there and see a kit that you like, um, and again, what I mean, kit, that's like, an, that's just like the skeleton of a reborn doll, basically, um, is just the head and the limbs. Um, some people include the, the body, which you have to stuff and with polyfill and you know some people use sand some people use other things or whatever um but what you use to fill the body um that's not included that's something that you as an artist would have to have um so that's that so this is like the first time that we see the babies um and I like to start off with the blank kit because you have no idea how that baby really is going to come out you can kind of guess and hope but you really don't know until the artist actually starts to work on it and starts to reborn or bring to life the kid. Um, but that's the parallel to it. Then the next step, um, like I said, there are trimesters of a pregnancy. There are stages of reborn doll collecting. So once you have selected your doll or selected your kit, then the next thing you would do is um, to send it off, like I said, to the artist and let them begin to work on it. But while they are doing that, some reborn moms do what's called nesting. And nesting is simply just preparing for the baby. It's um, basically buying things um, like, you know, some collectors such as myself have changing tables, have cribs, 
um, you know, full nursery setups, have baby swings, have chairs, activity centers, all kind of things in preparation for the, for the doll, for the baby. Um, so that is something that's also similar because even in a regular pregnancy, you're going to, you know, start getting, you're going to start getting things for the baby slowly and shortly. So, um, that's the parallel. And that's another joy. Like I said, I know I get excited when I know I have a baby on the way and I know the baby's size somewhat and I can kind of start looking. And if I see some things in the store that get my attention or like now I've been going crazy since everybody's having these great sales, buying things for her. So, you know, those are some, some joys there. Like I said, shopping for babies is a joy. Um, because like I said, you start off with no idea really of what you want. But it's like um, whatever grabs your attention. And like I said, I do like the process of just sitting there sometime and just scrolling through the different babies and seeing how they look. Um, and just imagining how they would look with my customization. Um, I've talked about copycatting and I'm not knocking it. But I know for me, I just like to have something a little different. Um, than everybody else. I'm not going to say a little different. I like to have something different from everybody else. I don't like to have the same. Now, in the hobby, you will come across people who have the same, and that's fine. That's the way it is. But I'm saying typically, I like to get something that's tailored to me and to my likings, just like this little girl. I've seen maybe some that's kind of like her, um, but to me, she would be the only one of this tone that I have seen, this actual you know tone like this. So to me, she's different. Um, and if you've seen one that's sort of like her, let me know. <laughs> so I can see. I just want to see. I'm curious. Um, but anyway, so getting off of that. Um, so we get excited when we're starting to buy things for the baby, for the doll that's coming. So that's another joy of reborn motherhood. Another joy is with a regular, not regular, with a real baby, there's a baby shower. Um, that's when your family, friends, or whoever, your associates, sometimes even your co-workers come together to get things for you. But in the Reborn Dolly world, we have what's called box openings. When the baby comes, um, you know, uh, when the baby is shipped from the artist or from another collector, depending on how you bought the baby. Um, some artists, not all, but most artists do include what's called a box opening. And that's going to be like extra outfits, blankets, pacifiers, bottles in some cases, um, little hats, booties, socks, headbands. It just depends on the artist. Um, some people go to, you know, I don't want to call it the extreme, but some people do some very nice, fancy box opening where they would have customized things for the baby, especially if the baby is a certain edition or special edition. Um, that baby will have some personalized things to show the addition, just like the um, Finley uh, baby by Lauren Miller Sands that I had. Um, she came with a personalized onesie because she is the Finley edition. Um, and speaking of Lauren Miller Sands, I looked in that little elephant basket that I had, um, that I just had stuff in there, and I found this little pea, little sweet pea. And I forgot all about her, and I feel so bad. So <laughs> I put her here, and she's a Lauren Miller Sands baby, by the way. She's resin. Um, but I like her, so I'm just going to let this be her permanent place. And she's looking at me like, I, I can't believe you had me in that basket and just didn't even acknowledge me. But anyway, there's little sweet girl. All right, <laughs> so back on topic. Um, so like the box opening, you don't know typically what's in there. Um, a lot of artists or collectors like to surprise you, so they're not going to tell you, oh, I'm including this. Even if you see pictures of the baby before they send them home, they may show in one outfit, but... When you open the box, they may have a whole different <laughs> collection or so. Um, if you go back and look at the box opening that I had for the late, the latest baby I had, which was Kaya, who's no longer with me. Um, that sounds so bad, no longer with me. She has a new mommy. <laughs> I adopted her out. She has a new mommy who loves her, and she sends update pictures, so Kaya is in the right home. But um, if you look at her box opening, she had a very massive box opening. It was so much stuff <laughs> that I was just like, wow, you know. Um, it probably was one of my biggest box openings, to be honest. In all my years of collecting, it probably was, if not the biggest, it was definitely um, one of the biggest. So um, you have all types of surprises. Some artists even give gifts to the mom. Like they'll have something specifically from the mom. It could be earrings. It could be a candle. It could be tea. It could be... Uh, candy it could be chocolates it could be a lot of things so 
those are like the fun aspects, the, the joys of reborn hobby. And of course, once you get that baby, um, it's nothing like it when you open the box and you may have seen work in progress pictures, but to sit and actually have that baby in front of you where you can kind of look it over, um, that's a joy because you get to see all of the little intricate details that the artist will do um, for the baby, like little birthmarks like here. Um, I'll try to bring her in. Hopefully you can see it on her arm. But Kensington has a little birthmark there. And it's just little details like that that I enjoy seeing um, on her. The way her eyebrows are, the direction of her eyes. Like I told you, Kensington, to me, has a little cross. She's a little cross-eyed. Just a little tad bit little cross-eyed. Um, and I like it that way, honestly. Because it makes her look even more grumpy to me. <laughs> it does. It gives her that even, you know, meaner look. So sometimes when she's photographed, when I look at her compared to other graces, to me, she looks a little bit more grumpier than they do. <laughs> and um, even like she, you know, she, like she could do something if she wanted to. You know, this is that one little hand she keeps up and, you know, she looks like that's the good slapping hand for her. So, <laughs> um, anyway, she's a joy to me because I tell you, just... I don't know if you can see that hand up anyway, but um, she's a joy to me, a joy to have, and I'm very grateful to have her in my collection. Um, but I just wanted to kind of go into a little bit more in depth of some of the joys. Like I said, it's not just the fact that, oh, I have a doll. Oh, joy, joy, joy. But there are stages that we go through in the collecting. Like I said, the newness of having a new doll. You kind of, I hate to say it this way, but you do. You kind of push the older dolls, you know, you give a little bit more attention to the, you know, to the new doll. Um, so that's a joy too. Um, some people don't have that instant bond and that's fine, but then um, most collectors do. Um, you kind of have that instant bond with them and you keep them in your collection for a long time. Or you see something different or you're ready to move on to a new one and you, you move on to a new one. So um, those are some extra joys. I think I did a better job this time of kind of bringing it all um, together as far as the joys. Because it's just not, again just having a doll you know that is a joy don't get me wrong but there are so many other things to the hobby too that you know people may not know about um like i said the nesting part they may not understand that they may not understand the box openings why those are so big why you see um if you just put in a search reborn box openings you'll come up with so many of them and you'll see different reactions um and like I said, some will be joyful. Most will be joyful, but then there's some that are not. <laughs> um, but like I said, most mothers, when they first get the reborn mothers, when they do get those babies, um, that's a joy. Also, the anticipation of them shipping, depending on how far they have to travel. For some mothers, they can have a good experience with that. For some, a bad. Like I've talked about Kaylee's um, travel. It was of no fault of her artist, but it took about two months for Kaylee to get here. Um, and she was coming from Germany. Um, now Kendrick's came from the same artist. I got her in like two weeks. So you see how it just kind of, you can't predict it. <laughs> you can't predict it. But I tell you when she did get here, I was, I had the joy. <laughs> That's a perfect example. I, I had joy when I got her because of her travel. Poor baby had such a rough travel. Um, that when she did get here, I, I was delighted. I couldn't, I mean, cause I really thought that I wasn't going to get her. And that I would have to be refunded and then I wouldn't get another um, Betty because she's a sold out edition. So I'm like, okay, I had my eye on this Betty. Now I'm not going to ever get one and blah, blah, blah. But hey, everything turned around um, in a good positive way. I have Kaylee. She's one of my dolls who's a keeper for sure. I don't, I don't believe I will ever get rid of her, but you never say never in this hobby. But I don't believe that I will. Just like I don't believe I will get rid of her. And just like I don't believe I'll get rid of Kendrick's. Those three are just, they're permanent babies. And I'm, I'm believing that number four and five will be keepers too. I think the days of the revolving nursery, even though I just got rid of Kaya. I didn't say rid, but I just adopted out Kaya. But I do believe that the uh, revolving door days of my collecting are over. Just like I did the previous video before the reborn motherhood joy. Uh, where I talked about just saying no. And I think I'm getting better and with those impulse baby sales, those, I would call those desperado <laughs> baby sales where you're buying a baby that um, is in between you waiting for another baby that you may have that may be taking a little while to make 
or maybe, you know, whatever is causing the delay, that gap in between, sometimes you just get so anxious and you're just like, okay, I'm gonna get another baby. And nine times out of 10, or I'll say 9.5 times out of 10, you're not gonna be satisfied with that baby because usually it's a rush decision. Usually it's a second rate baby, meaning it's not on the same level as the one that you initially want. And it's just our impatience that makes us um, get a baby like that. And I've done that several, several times throughout my years of collecting. And that's not a good thing because what you do is you're going to end up losing money. Because when the real baby you want comes, you're gonna you're not gonna want the you're not gonna want the gap baby. So, um, that's it, guys. I think I have said enough. Um, 15 minutes in. So Kensington and I are signing off. Um, I hope you have a great remainder of the week. And we will see you in our next video. Don't forget to um, hit the like button. And you can share as well with someone. And I hope you do enjoy the videos. I enjoy making them. And I hope you enjoy viewing them. And again, leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know if I missed again some other joys. Or if there's some joys that you have. Um, that you didn't mention in the first video that I did. Um, when you start sitting back just thinking about all the different things about the hobby. Um, like I said, I probably can do this video every day and come up with something different. But I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop here. But um, there are a lot of joys to it. And like I said, every collector will probably have a different joy. Um, some will connect. You know, others won't. Um, just like I know there are some mothers who use the dolls for comfort. That brings them joy. And, and, and they bring me comfort. I'm not going to say there's just other mothers. Um, they bring me comfort. They're very, to me, they're, they're stress relievers. I find when I'm here changing the baby, especially when I'm off camera and I'm changing a baby, or if I just sit and hold babies, especially when I had my silicone um, dolls and I would just hold them in the way they feel, the way they move, it's an instant calmer. It really is. It is an instant calmer. And if I'm tense or if I'm tired or just not in probably the best mood, just sitting there with the doll sometimes or just changing them and looking at how cute they look totally changes uh, my entire day. So anyway, there I go again. I'm going to end the video. Have a great remainder of the week. And Kensington and I, as well as the other girls, will see you in another video. Goodbye. Goodbye.